summer I had a successful Kickstarter where I aimed to raise £1,800. That was to buy software to basically tie up the development of a game called Forgotten Ball. That went too quick. <laughs> um, the £1,800 was uh, basically recommended to me after a bit of research and speaking to people that I knew who had done Kickstarters as a fair amount to give the mentality to people that you know this project could be funded with money raised. Um, but actually the money made it quite difficult, people didn't think it was enough money to actually get the game through, across the line. Um, hitting the submit button was not easy, I actually suffered with anxiety quite badly, I feel like I'm about to pass out. But back then I really did, and it took a while for me to actually hit submit. Uh, so that was one of the major problems. Um, prior to me having uh, launched the Kickstarter, I knew around 20% of the money for the Kickstarter was guaranteed to me through people I'd met at networking events uh, and game developing conferences. Um, I didn't ex expect the campaign to be successful, it kind of had a side to it where I was hoping it would just raise awareness of the game I was developing. Um, I didn't quite say it when I was doing the campaign, but when anybody backed the game, it was actually them inadvertently uh, basically validating the game. And that was really important when I was developing a game in my bedroom, like someone would in the 80s every day. Um, with the campaign, I wanted and I got feedback. So 126 people backed the game, um, and you know that's kind of awesome. I, I think um, each month I release a new build of the game, and that means that 126 people roughly play it every two to three weeks. Um, so when I did the campaign, uh, I kind of didn't do anything the first week, I kind of let it do its own thing. Uh, but after that, I kind of emailed, lyric messaged everyone I knew, asking for money. Um, I Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, forums all equaled out, and around 35% of the money I raised was raised through those avenues. Uh, over time, you can see an initial spike in the first kind of few days, and I went off beat to Radio Norfolk in the end few days. Uh, and Facebook, LinkedIn, UEA, kind of posted it about, and the forums shared it. Uh, I won't talk about that In case you didn't know, and this doesn't do it justice, if you have a successful campaign that looks really, really bland, um, it's strong uses of greys, and for any kind of 90s web developer out there, I would appreciate some kind of CSS fireworks, or something, just to kind of make it look a bit nicer. Um, of the 126 people that backed Forgotten Ball, 80% uh, of the backers I didn't know, um, I'm a one-man team with small social networks, so I had to work hard. Thankfully, UEA, uh, Boots Radio Norfolk, and the indie devs of Twitter got behind it, which kind of pushed it across the line. Um, but that wasn't said was a problem to the campaign. My funding total is a weird amount. Uh, in the creative industries, uh, 10%, um, dollars to pounds is quite a weird amount. So £10,000, sub $1,000, it didn't quite work. Uh, that was something I had to kind of overcome. Uh, I also overpriced the product. So when I plan to release Forgotten Ball, it's not going to be $6 as it would have been for an American backer to download the game. So in hindsight, that was actually uh, something I had to overcome. And in fact, uh, out of all the backers of the game, only one person was American or Canadian. Um, also, the rewards I had didn't appeal to everybody. Uh, I went out alone, as I've previously said. But on UK Kickstarter, you have to pay by credit card. And I got a lot of emails saying that, that wasn't, uh, people didn't want to back the project because of that. Um, that's uh, the project really does depend on the uh, video itself, and mine was pretty poor. Um, I did it myself with, you know, Windows Editor, and that wasn't great. But the project, the video got 1,800 plays, and 30 percent of those played till the end. Um, Kickstarter, like Vimeo, does this thing called Start Picks, and they're very important to be to be picked. Um, I was consistently one of the most popular video games on the site, but I was never a Start Pick, and I'm still trying to figure out why. Uh, I did email; they just they literally replied saying I had really sweet gifts. Um, once I got this money, it kind of sucked. Uh, the money is actually a weight responsibility. When 120 people have backed the project, there's quite an emphasis for me to actually deliver it. Uh, the Kickstarter took 10% of it. Not everyone's cars went through, so I didn't get the full amount, and the money actually really only goes so far. Uh, now, obviously, because of that, I don't want to let people down. Time in itself is quite a negative these days, and <laughs> university and work also quite a big deal. Uh, I don't think I need to say it. Good design takes time. Uh, I have to reiterate quite a lot, and I'm quite stretched, you know, so it's, uh, it's a big project. Um, 73 people play the game every other week, uh, and they've inadvertently become my QA team that I don't have to pay, which is really important for this kind of project. And weirdly, I get to meet random people quite often just to play my game, which uh, is quite a nice feeling. Um, every now and then, I get to see a friend on Reddit where they're talking about the project on Twitter, and uh, that, that really is quite humbling. And my social network has increased quite steadily. Um, I, I, it's about 33% over the last year, uh, the last three months. Um, my game is in part funded by people who want to play it, so I don't have, I, I kind of have it validated. And finally, you know, I, I don't know how to end, but I kind of feel that uh, it was really justified to be able to validate or invalidate my idea quite quickly. Right, thank you.